Hi students, how are you all? I believe you are all keeping well. Ah, uh, well, students, I welcome you back once again. And in today's session, we are going to begin with a new unit, which is titled as Environment. And reading A deals with what is man without the beast? What is man without the beast? Now, what do you understand by the word beast? Beast is any other animal. except human beings okay any animal except the human being we are all social animals right so any other animal except human beings now what is a man without the beast if all the beast were you know gone men would die from great loneliness of spirit for whatever happens to beast also happens to man all things are interconnected okay all things are interconnected all things are you know like connected like blood which unites one family man is dependent on animals okay man is dependent on animals if beasts disappeared there is a damage to nature and in turn causes loss to man so without the beast there is no man now you understand the title right what is man without the beast okay well students before we get into the lesson let's know little bit about the speaker okay let's know little bit about the speaker the chief seattle was a leader of devanish and other pacific northwest tribes the city of seattle washington bears his name in 1854 Chief Seattle reluctantly agreed to sell tribal lands to the United States government and to move to government established reservations. Though the authenticity of the speech has been challenged, most agree that it contains the substance and perspective of Chief Seattle's attitude towards nature and the white race. So the chief Seattle was a leader of Devanish and the Pacific Northwest tribes. He was a leader of Devanish and Pacific Northwest tribes. And the city of Seattle, Washington, bears his name. In 1854, the chief Seattle reluctantly agreed. Now, what is meant by reluctantly? Not willingly, with a hesitant. Okay. So reluctantly, he agreed to sell. tribal lands to the united states government okay so he he was unwilling to sell the tribal lands to the united states and move to the government established reservations okay reservation is you know the act of keeping back or withholding or setting apart okay so uh, he was not willing to sell the tribal lands to the you know united states but he agreed to sell uh the lands of the tribes to the united states and they moved to the uh, government established reservations okay though the authenticity of speech has been challenged now what is meant by authenticity is a genuineness okay or you know the quality of being authentic okay now the authenticity of speech has been challenged most agree that it contains the substance and perspective of chief seattle's attitude towards nature and white race okay it is actually the speech delivered to the whites when he was selling the lands of the tribals got it people choose different ways to protect the environment Here is a speech delivered by a Red Indian chief Seattle more than a century ago to save his land. Okay, usually people use different ways and means to protect the environment. Okay, but here we have a speech delivered by Red Indian chief Seattle. It was delivered more than a century ago to save his land. The speech was mainly on to save his land. Is it clear? Chief Seattle became world famous for a moving speech he made in 1854 just before his lands were taken from him and his people. Seattle's words resonate very well in the environmental community and are in fact 
considered to be something like a gospel of the green. So Chief Seattle was the leader of Devanish tribe. Okay, and he became world famous for moving speech he made in 1854 at the time of giving away his people's land to United States government. Okay, he made or he delivered a speech. Okay, now Seattle's, Seattle's words resonate very well in the environmental community. Now, what is meant by resonate? Resonate is continue to have a powerful effect or value. So, uh, Seattle's words have an effect or value very well in the environmental community and are in fact considered to be something like a gospel of the green. They are considered to be the gospel of the green. Now why the Seattle's words are considered to be something like gospel of the green because his speech was completely based on saving his land not to pollute it to accept the nature as a god to accept you know that something exists in the land to consider as their brothers and sisters and to treat them well okay so that's why his words were considered to be something like gospel of the green not to pollute but to protect okay how can you buy or sell the sky, the warmth of the land? The idea is strange to us. If you do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of water, how can you buy them from us? Okay, so the chief Seattle says, how can we buy or sell the sky? Can we buy the sky or sell the sky? No. Or the warmth of the land. What is meant by warmth? The quality or you know state of being warm. Okay. The quality or state of being warm. Can we buy or sell the warmth of the land? So the idea is very very strange. Now if we do not own the freshness of the air. The sparkle of the water. Now what is meant by sparkle? Shine brightly with the flashes of light. Now if we don't own if you do not own the freshness of the air and sparkle of the water how can we buy and sell or how can you buy those from us okay every part of the earth is sacred to my people every shining pine needle every sandy shore every mist in the dark woods every cleared and humming insect are holy in the memory and experience of my people. The sap which curses through the trees carries the memory and experience of my people. The sap which curses through the trees carries the memories of the red man. So what does uh, Chief Seattle say in his uh, speech? He says every part of the earth is sacred. Okay. Now what is meant by sacred? Holy. The meaning of sacred is holy. So every part of the earth is sacred to his people. And every shining pine needle. You know what is pine tree? Pine tree has you know like a sharp needles. If you look at the picture you will understand. Okay. So he says every shining pine needle. Every sandy shore. Every mist in the dark woods. Every cleared and humming insects. Humming insects you understand. Uh, insects that make noise buzzing noise okay so humming insects are holy in the memory and experience of my people so the chief Seattle says everything that exists in the land considered to be holy okay whatever it is it could be you know shining pine needles sandy shore mist cleared and humming insects Okay, all these he considered to be, you know, holy. Fine. The sap which occurs through the trees carries a memory and experience of my people. What is meant by sap? It is a fluid that is, you know, produced by the tree. Okay, it's a fluid produced by the tree. So the sap which comes out of the tree carries the memories and experiences of his people. And he also says the sap which comes out of the trees carry the memories of the red man now who is a red man red man 
it is you know a contemptuous term used to refer to north american indians okay north american indians we are part of the earth and it is a part of us the perfumed flowers are our sisters the deer the horse the great eagle these are our brothers it's clear right so the chief seattle says that we are part of the earth and the earth is part of us okay and the perfumed flowers are their sisters the deer the horse the great eagle these are our brothers okay they don't consider them as animals they consider them as their brothers and sisters okay now what is meant by perfumed flowers having a pleasant scent or aroma sweet smelling sweet scented flowers okay the rocky crests the juices in the meadows the body heat of the pony and the man all belong to the same family now what is meant by rocky crests rocky crest is you know the top of a mountain or hill the top of a mountain or hill meadows meadow you know it's a land that is covered with grass land that is covered with grass so the speaker the chief seattle says rocky crests the juices in the meadows and the body heat of the pony pony is a horse of a small breed and the man all belong to the same family okay so everything belongs to the same family clear so when the great chief in the washington sends word that he wishes to buy our land he asks much of us the great white chief sends word that he will reserve us a place so that we can live comfortably to ourselves he will be our father and we will be his children so we will consider your offer to buy land okay now when the government of united states tries to buy the land from the tribals they also assured them that they would give you know a land to live their life comfortably okay that's what we see here when the great chief in washington sends word that he wishes to buy our land he asks much of us okay now the great white chief sends word that he will reserve us a place okay that he would give us a place so that we can live comfortably to ourselves okay now who are we here tribals okay they could live comfortably to themselves because united states of government when they buy the land from the tribals they are going to give them some other land to live their life comfortably okay and he also says he will be our father and we will be his children okay so we will consider your offer to buy the land but it will not be easy for this land is sacred to us this shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not just water but the blood of our ancestors okay so the chief seattle says you know when he receives a word from the great chief from the washington that they would like to buy the land and uh, they would be provided some other land to live their life comfortably the chief seattle says it is not an easy thing to sell our land our tribal land because this land is very very holy to us sacred sacred is holy to us the shining water that moves in the streams rivers is not just water but the blood of our ancestors now what is meant or what do you understand by ancestor a person related to you who lived long time ago okay ancestor a person related to you who lived a long time ago okay so please understand it is not that you know water is blood no okay it's only personification he says that you know uh, the water that flows in the river is not just water but the blood of their ancestors got it if you sell your land you must remember that it is sacred blood of our ancestors 
If you sell your land, you must remember that it is sacred, and you must teach your children that it is sacred, and that each ghostly reflection in the clear water of the lakes tells of the events in the life of my people. Okay, so the chief Seattle says, you should remember that it is sacred. Okay, the land is sacred. Now, if you sell our land, you must remember that it is holy, and there is a holy blood of our ancestors okay and he also says you must teach your children that it is sacred and that everything that reflects in the shining clear shining water is the are the reflections or events of the life of his people okay now what is meant by ghostly reflection here it seems you know unreal or you know unnatural maybe frightening because of the spirit of a dead person okay so it is uh, unreal or you know unnatural okay the waters murmured as the voice of my father's father the rivers of our brothers quench our thirst the rivers carry our canoes and feed our children if we sell you our land, you must remember to teach your children that the rivers are our brothers and yours and you must henceforth give the rivers the kindness that you would give my brother. So well please understand it is not you know the waters are murmuring okay the flowing water makes a noise right so the voice of the water the speaker says that it is the voice of his father's father okay it is not the water is murmuring but you know the flowing water makes noise right so uh, the speaker says the murmur is the voice of his father's father and the rivers are our brothers who quench our thirst okay the rivers are our brothers who quench our thirst now what is meant by quench satisfy by drinking okay they satisfy our thirst and the rivers carry our canoes canoes are a light narrow boat with the pointed ends and no eel okay boats okay the rivers carry boats and feed our children so the speaker says if you sell our land you must remember to teach your children that rivers are our brothers okay they are not just rivers they are our brothers okay and henceforth you must give due respect and kindness show kindness to the river as a show kindness affection towards your brother because you consider river as your brother right so the speaker says okay you must treat the rivers with the kindness okay as you treat your brother the air is precious to the red man for all things share the same breath the beast the tree the man they all share the same breath now what is meant by precious the meaning of precious is of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly so the air is precious to the red man and not only to the red man for all the things that are existing on the land okay because the bees the trees the man all of them share the same air okay all of them breathe the same air so the chief seattle says that you know the air is the precious one the white man does not seem to notice the air he breathes like a man dying for many days he is numb to the stench but if we sell you our land you must remember that the air is precious to us that the air sheds its spirit with all the life it supports so the chief seattle says the white man does not notice the air he breathes it's like you know a man dying for many days he is numb to the stench what is meant by numb deprived of physical sensation okay you do not feel any sensation in that particular body okay numb to the stench stench is you know a strong and very unpleasant smell he does not smell he does not uh, feel the air that passes through his nostrils 
okay so the chief seattle says but if we sell our land you must remember that the air is precious to us you should remember that the air is precious to us and that the air shares its spirit with all the life it supports okay it is not only the man is breathing the air okay it supports all the living beings that are existing on the land so please treat the air as a precious okay the wind that gave our grandfather his first breath also receives his last sigh and if we sell you our land you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where even the white man can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow's flowers so the chief seattle says the wind that gave the first breath to our grandfather even receives the last breath okay and he says if you sell our land you must keep it sacred sacred is holy you must keep it apart separate okay and uh, the chief seattle says as a place where even the white can go and taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadows flowers so we will consider your offer to buy our land if we decide to accept i will make one condition the white man must treat the beast of this land as his brothers i am a savage and do not understand any other way i have seen thousands of rotting buffaloes on the prairie left by the white man who shot them from a passing train so finally the chief seattle he decides to agree to sell his land or you know his people's land with one condition okay what is the condition the white man must treat the beast of this land as his brothers okay the white man has to consider all the beasts that are existing on the land in that particular area to consider them as his brothers okay as a brothers he says i am a savage and do not understand any other way now what is meant by savage savage is a member of people regarded as a primitive and uncivilized okay simple uncivilized i am an uncivilized man and i do not understand any other way and he says the chief seattle says i have seen thousands of rotting buffaloes rotting buffaloes are decaying buffaloes on the prairie prairie is you know large open area of grassland a large open area of grassland left by the white man who shot them from a passing train what do the white man do as he passes through the train he shoots the buffaloes and you know he shots them dead so the chief seattle says i see i have seen thousands of decaying buffaloes on the large open area okay they are shot by the white man clear i am a savage and do not understand and how the smoking iron horse can be made more important than the buffaloes that you kill only to stay alive what is man without the beasts if all the beasts were gone man would die from a great loneliness of the spirit for whatever happens to the beasts soon happens to man all things are connected so the chief seattle says that he is an uncivilized man okay he is an uncivilized man and he says that he does not understand how the smoking iron horse okay now what is meant by smoking iron horse you see in the picture right a steam railway locomotive okay how a smoking iron horse can be made more important than buffalo okay buffalo is that to kill only to stay alive okay and the chief seattle says what is man without the beast okay what is the existence what is the meaning of man without beast if all the beasts were to be killed okay if all the beasts were to be gone we will all die of loneliness of spirit okay because whatever happens to beast happens to the human being also we are all interconnected we are all connected clear respect you must teach your children that the ground beneath their feet is the ashes of our grandfathers so that 
they will respect the land tell your children that the earth is rich with all the lives of our kin teach your children what we have taught our children that the earth is our mother okay so the chief seattle says you must teach your children the white man has to teach his children that the ground beneath under their feet is you know very sacred because it is the ashes of their grandfathers their ancestors so they should respect the land and the earth is rich with all the lives of their kin okay so the chief seattle urges the white man to teach their children to respect the land as their mother okay to consider the earth as their mother okay whatever befalls the earth befalls the son of the earth if men spit upon the ground they spit upon themselves this we know the earth does not belong to man man belongs to the earth all things are connected like the blood which unites one family all things are connected whatever befalls the earth befalls the son of the earth it's clear right so whatever you know befalls befalls is you know happens whatever happens to the earth it happens to the sons of the earth who are sons of the earth we okay here the chief seattle is you know urging the white man he says you have to treat the land as the mother okay and he says if you spit upon the ground it is like spitting on themselves the chief seattle says if you spit on the ground it is like spitting upon themselves okay and he says earth does not belong to the man but man belongs to the earth and we are all connected like the blood which unites one family okay we are all connected all things are connected so whatever happens to the earth happens to the sons of the earth okay man did not weave the web of life he is merely a strand in it whatever he does to the web he does to himself even the white man whose god walks and talks with him as a friend to a friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny we may be brothers after all we shall see okay so the chief seattle says man did not weave he did not make the web of life okay he is only a strand in it what is meant by strand a single piece of thread okay a single piece of thread so whatever he does to the web he does to himself and even the white man whose god walks and talks with him as a friend to a friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny and we are after all we are all brothers and sisters okay we are all brothers and sisters one thing we know which the white man may one day discover our god is the same god you may think now that you own him as you wish to own our land but you cannot he is a god of man and his compassion is equal for the red man and the white okay so the chief seattle says one day the white man will realize okay he will discover that the god that they worship is the same god the god is same for everyone okay and the chief seattle says okay uh, the white man thinks that he owns god as he owns their land okay the white man is you know the chief seattle says that you know the white man thinks that he owns god as he is as they wish to own their land but they cannot own god okay because god is god for everyone he is a god of man and his compassion is equal for everyone whether you are red man or white man you are black man okay so the meaning of compassion is sympathetic or you know concern for the suffering or you know misfortunes of others the earth is precious to him and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator the whites too shall pass perhaps sooner than all other tribes 
but in your perishing you will shine brightly fired by the strength of the god who brought you to this land and for some special purpose gave you dominion over this land over the red man the chief seattle says the earth is precious to him the meaning of precious is you know having great importance so you know the earth is precious to him and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator so if we damage the earth it's like you know uh, having a dislike or having no respect on its creator now who is the creator creator is a god right now the wise too shall pass perhaps sooner than all other tribes okay so one day or the other all have to perish all have to die so he says but in your perishing you will shine brightly fired by the strength of the god who brought you to this land and for some special purpose gave you dominion over this land and over the red man fine so what is meant by perishing perishing is you know causing destruction ruin or damage extreme comfort or death so one day whether you are red man or white man all will have to die all will have to perish okay now what is meant by dominion dominion is having authority having supreme authority fine god has created all of us in his image and likeness and he gave us dominion over the creatures that he created right we have the supreme authority sovereignty over the land fine do you understand so the chief seattle says when the whites you know a uh, perishing time or you know at the time of destruction or in you know, extreme comfort discomfort when they feel they will a uh, shine brightly fired by the strength of the god who brought them to this land and you know a god has given special purpose or the dominion over the land and over the red man okay that's how the red man lived under the authority of the whites right the destiny is a mystery to us for we do not understand when the buffaloes are slaughtered the wild horses tamed the secret corners of the forest heavy with the scent of many men and the views of the ripe hills blotted by talking wires where is the thicket gone where is the eagle gone the end of the living and the beginning of survival what is meant by destiny destiny is you know the things that will happen in the future the meaning of mystery is something that is difficult you know or impossible to understand or explain so the chief seattle says the destiny okay the things that are going to happen in the future it's very very difficult to understand it's a mystery to us because for we do not understand we do not understand when the buffaloes are slaughtered killed okay the meaning of slaughtered is killed we do not know when the buffaloes are slaughtered and you know the wild horses tamed you know what is meant by tamed make less powerful okay make less powerful the secret corners of the forest heavy with the scent of many men and the view of the ripe hills blotted by talking wires now what is meant by blotted blotted is you know kept from being seen or concealed okay kept from being seen or you know the meaning is concealed okay so the ripe hills are being concealed hidden by the wires okay so where is the thicket gone now what is meant by thicket an area of uh, you know trees and bushes growing closely together okay thicket is an area of trees and bushes go growing closely together and please understand talking wires are you know it is not that you know uh, wires are talking but they are telephone wires okay telephone wires you understand now fine where is the eagle gone where is the eagle gone the end of the living and the beginning of survival this is the end of the living and the beginning of survival now what is meant by end of living end you understand right now what is meant by living living is having life being alive 
right being active and thriving vigorous strong still existing so the chief seattle says this is the end of the living okay this is the end of the living which means you know there won't be no more life okay living is having life right now beginning of survival now what is meant by survival the state of you know continuing to live or exist so the chief seattle says this is the end of living and the beginning of survival do you understand well students i believe we have understood okay see you in the next session till then take care bye